Hey friends, we're reading Little House in the Big Woods and we're on page 24. Toward morning he came back, took the horse and sled, and hurried away again. They're talking about Pa. He had shot a bear. Laura and Mary jumped up and down and clapped their hands. They were so glad. Mary shouted, I want the drumstick, I want the drumstick. Mary did not know how a big, how big a bear's drumstick was. When Pa came back, he had both a bear and a pig in the wagon. He had been going through the woods with a big bear trap in his hands and a gun on his shoulder. When he walked around a big pine tree covered with snow, and the bear was behind the tree. The bear had just killed the pig and was picking it up to eat it. Pa said the bear was standing up on its hind legs, holding the pig in its paws, just as though they were hands. Pa shot the bear, and there was no way of knowing where the pig came from nor whose pig it was. So I just brought home the bacon, Pa said. There was plenty of fresh meat to last for a long time. <coughs> Excuse me. The days and nights were so cold that the pork in a box and the bear meat hanging in the little shed outside the back door were frozen solid and did not thaw. It's happening. Can you imagine it being so cold that the meat freezes solid outside? When Ma wanted fresh meat for dinner, Pa took the axe and cut off a chunk of frozen bear meat or pork. Sausage balls or the salt pork or the smoked hams and the venison Ma could get for herself from the shed or the attic. The snow kept coming till it was drifted and banked against the house. In the mornings, the window panes were covered with frost and in beautiful pictures of trees and flowers and fairies. It gets cold enough in the winter you can see frost on your winter window. And sometimes the way that the ice freezes and crystallizes the beautiful little snowflakes and flowers. Check it out if we have a very, very, very cold day this winter. Ma said that Jack Frost came in the night and made the pictures while everyone was asleep. Laura thought that Jack Frost was a little man, all snowy white, wearing a glittering white pointed cap and soft white knee boots made of deerskin. His coat was white and his mittens were white, and he did not carry a gun on his back, but in his hands he had shining sharp tools with which he carved the pictures. Laura and Mary were allowed to take Ma's thimble and make pretty patterns of circles in the frost on the glass, but they never spoiled the pictures that Jack Frost had made in the night. When they put their mouth mouths close to the pane and blew their breath on it. The white frost melted and ran in drops down the glass. Think about that. Is your breath warm or is it cold? Then they could see the drifts of snow outdoors and the great trees standing bare and black, making thin blue shadows on the white snow. Laura and Mary helped Ma with the work. Every morning there were dishes to wipe, Mary wiped more of them than Laura because she was bigger, but Laura always wiped carefully her own little cup and plate. By the time the dishes were all wiped and set away, the trundle bed was aired. A trundle bed is a bed that slides underneath another bed, so it's hidden away. Then, standing one on each side, Laura and Mary straightened the covers, tucked them in well at the foot and the sides of the bed, plumped up the pillows, and put them in place. Then Ma pushed the trundle bed into its place under the big bed. After this was done, Ma began the work that belonged to that day. Each day had its own proper work. Ma used to say, wash on Monday, iron on Tuesday, mend on Wednesday, churn on Thursday, clean on Friday, bake on Saturday, and rest on Sunday. Laura liked the churning and the baking best days best of all. So can you think about what do you think they might be churning long ago? Think about 150 years ago or 200 years ago. What might they have been churning? We're going to find out. In winter, the cream was not yellow as it was in summer, and butter churned from it was white and not so pretty. So they're making butter. Ma liked everything on her table to be pretty, so in the wintertime, she colored the butter herself. We're going to pause there, and tomorrow we're going to read all about how to make butter. I can't wait.